Hey guys, before this video started, I just want to announce that I have a brand new second channel. On this channel, you'll be able to find mainly top 10s from stuff that just isn't wrestling, as well as that video essays, discussion videos, maybe podcasts, vlogs, short films, documentaries, and more stuff. So be sure to go and subscribe to that. Come and get to maybe 750 subscribers. I don't know. Link is in the description. Thank you guys so much. What is going on guys, it is Tom or Top 10 Wrestling and welcome to the 10 worst women's champions in WWE history. I just farted, hopefully you didn't hear that, this is really awkward. Um, I've counted down the worst US champions and the worst tag champions, now it's time for the women's champions. The next one will probably be the worst cruiserweight champion, so stay tuned for that. This list is going to include the women's championship, the divas championship and the raw and smackdown women's championships, the, the two current women's belts. And NXT Women's as well, even though there are no NXT Women's Champions on this list. Spoiler alert, sorry. But yeah, let's get right into this list. Number 10, Layla. Layla won the Divas Championship in 2012, and boy was it one of the most forgettable reigns ever. The thing is, Layla won the championship after returning from injury, and before she got injured, Layla was just kind of Michelle McCool's sidekick. She was almost a jobber in a way, uh, a jobber for the women's division. And then she returns, and she's all of a sudden the top of the division. It made no sense, it was completely out of nowhere, and the reign was really boring. Number 9, Natalia. Man, I really didn't want to put Natty on this list. She doesn't deserve to be on this list. She deserved a good reign when she did win the Divas Championship. And it's crazy to me that she's only ever had one title reign in the WWE. Natalia won the Divas Championship in 2010, and it's almost like the WWE gave up on her the second she won the title. Natalia would go on to lose it on her first defense to Eve Torres at the Royal Rumble in a fatal four-way match and she's never won the title since and you know what I really want her to win at SummerSlam I really do number eight Brie Bella the Bella twins have really improved a lot over the years but back when they were just starting back in you know 2008 when they first debuted until 2012 they were just bad Brie Bella won the championship in 2011, and it was just another really boring, forgettable reign. Nobody looks back at, you know, defining women's championship reigns and thinks of Brie Bella as the Divas champion. Number 7, Alicia Fox. Again, another person I wish didn't have to be on this list because they deserved a better reign. I mean, Alicia Fox is one of the most underrated women's wrestlers ever. Alicia Fox won the Divas Championship in a fatal four-way match in 2010 in a move that was really out of nowhere. And like with Natalia's reign, it's like they gave up on her the second she won the title. She'd go on to lose it to Melina at SummerSlam in Cameron's favourite match. Number 6, Nikki Bella. I am talking about Nikki Bella's first ever championship reign, not her record-breaking championship reign from 2014 until 2015, I'm talking about her reign in 2012. The first thing that was bad about her reign was the way she won it. She won it from Beth Phoenix in a Lumberjill match where all the Lumberjills ganged up on Beth Phoenix to help Nikki Bella win, so it wasn't even a clean win. And then she was going to defend it against Beth Phoenix at Extreme Rules, but Beth was injured. And so Layla, returning from injury, was thrown into the match, and then Layla would win it. And then they were fired. Brie and Nikki were fired the next night on Raw. So, great reign that was. Number 5, Sable. Sable won the Women's Championship in the WWF at a time in the late 90s, in the Attitude Era, where if you were hot, you were put over the actual women's wrestlers who were good wrestlers. It was all about looks back then. And that's exactly why Sable won it. She couldn't wrestle that well and her promo abilities were just embarrassing. Like her promos were terrible. Number four, The Cat. This is kind of the same point as Sable. She won it at a time where she only got it because she was good looking. And WWE used every opportunity they could to get her half naked for the male audience. It's really good to see how much WWE prioritizes the women's division now. I mean, we should be grateful to have people like Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks and Bailey and Asuka because back then it was terrible. Number three, Jillian Hall. Jillian Hall should have never won the Divas Championship. She is the shortest reigning Divas Champion ever, only holding it for a couple of minutes. Jillian Hall, Hall has always been used as a jobber in the women's division, 
And so when she won the title, it was very shocking and fans were not excited about her being champion. So when she did lose it, I guess that was kind of a good thing because you got the bitter taste out of the fans' mouths. Number 2, Deborah. Deborah had no business being a wrestler. Deborah had no business being a championship holder. She had absolutely no business being the top of the division. Deborah was a manager. And WWE, why did they make her a wrestler? She did not deserve to be a champion whatsoever. And number one, Harvey Whippleman. It's kind of obvious why Harvey Whippleman is number one on the worst women's champions um, list. And that's because Harvey Whippleman is a man. He's purely number one because of that reason. He did not deserve to be women's champion at all because he's a man and it's a women's title. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, smack that like button. I kind of had to rush that number one spot because my audio software kept crashing and I didn't want to keep it for too long. But yeah, if you did enjoy, smack that like button. Be sure to check out my new second channel like I said at the start of the video. And goodbye and keep on rolling.